Let's walk through it. Let's walk through it. Let's walk through it again. Okay. All right. Good ground. You want some what? Say, oh, I want some popcorn. Now it comes. Okay. You spoke it into existence. But you can't use it like this. You put it in the microwave, close the door, and what do you push? Pizza? Potato chips? Uh, um, TV dinner? You shall push popcorn because you shall have whatsoever you say. I push the popcorn, and then I push what? In the name of Jesus. Now, I open it up, and I get my popcorn. See, I told you prayer don't work. I told you, I told you, I prayed. I named it Jesus. Your problem is when you put it in and push start in the name of Jesus, now the process is starting. Am I going in there now? Am I going to sit in there with it? Am I going to disturb it? I'm going to do what? <laughs> now, I need somebody to, to ask me, are you going to get some popcorn? Are you, are you, going, are you making popcorn? <laughs> yes. Take, let me see you. I, I don't have it in my hand right now. <laughs> see, this is when you sound like a liar. Somebody asking you, you got a job? Yes. Where is it? It's in good ground. <laughs> you just lying. You don't have a job. Yes, I do. Where you work, where I say it. Are oh, you listening to me? And so right now, I could, to prove you, to prove you, I could open this up. And I can pull it out. Because I want to prove something to you, my friend. But if I want to prove God and show his grace and show his mercy, and show his goodness. I've got to wait on him and not rush it. A whole lot of y'all waiting. Me too. I have no signs. It's been weeks. It's been months. It's been years. People are calling me fake. They're calling you phony. They said you're a liar. They said you're not going to get what you said. They said you tried to blame all that on God. And one day, sitting there, you hear that noise. You push that button. And here it is. And that's what, look at that, that same bag a few minutes ago. That was... Do I eat it right now? Not me. <laughs> because even after it's manifested, I'm mature enough to realize now that if I waited on God to deliver it, if I waited on God to prepare it, if I waited on God to get it ready, I have to, be, I have to wait long enough now for God to say, it's ready. And so now, I have a couple of bags that are manifested. Well, is that all I get? Well, no. According to God's word, if I ask, I shall receive again, right? So, I just got a little bit, but there's some more. See, now, now here's how it goes bad for you. You get one bag, and all of a sudden you go, ooh, Lord Jesus, thank you. And you tell somebody else, well, you know, I, I can get me some popcorn, hallelujah. And they say, well, I don't understand how it works. Here is how we mess up. We push the start button, and then we look in it. And for what we could see, it wasn't working. Because we live by faith and not by sight. After God shows you something, you've got to trust God again. Now, let's go through it as a church because I want you to do it. Now, I'm just using popcorn because this is all I had. But he gives you the desire, first of all. You didn't come up with the desire. The Bible said, delight yourself in the Lord, he'll give you the desires of your heart. The Lord gave you the, another word for desire. Great, thank you, Father. Another word is appetite. Have you ever seen a billboard or something that made you want something? See, God gives you the appetite. 
When God gives you the appetite, that's the desire, he gives you the appetite and then you speak it. And when you speak it, you shall have whatsoever you But if you don't have the idea to speak it, it will never come forth. See, it was minding its own business. Stand up for a minute. What's, what's your name? Michael, Michael, stand up and say, Pastor, I want a now later. See, okay, but she just saw me throw popcorn back here. I don't know why she said now later. Because maybe I have now later. Now, where did she get that idea from? From me. I told her what to ask me because I know what I provided. When you come up with this crazy idea about a new house, that wasn't your idea. That was God's idea. And he couldn't get it until he got you to speak it. And when you speak it, you shall have whatsoever you I have always felt like the weirdest person sometimes in my community or in my life or in preaching because God will give me things to speak. And I sound like a complete idiot to people. All our, Lord, I want a church. I remember we put the building over there. I want a bowling alley. I want racquetball courts. I want a movie theater. I want all this stuff like that. And I started speaking and everybody was like, you know, he's crazy. Movie theater in this neighborhood, bowling lanes in this neighborhood. That ain't Jesus. Racquetball courts and indoor track and facilities and a school, all that in this. That ain't Jesus. And God says, speak it, Ricky. And sometimes God will give you things to say. Did you feel weird when I asked you to say that, Michael? You felt kind of strange sitting up in church asking for, yeah. And every time God gives you something to say, you feel weird because his ways are not our ways. Some of you are telling people I'm going to be on computers. And right now you don't even have an etch -a sketch you're talking crazy. I'm going to have a three-bedroom home. You're living with your mama in a one-bedroom house on the couch. You sound like a fool. But God says, speak it. Now, what I want you to do is tell me what your seed is. Is there anybody brave enough to raise your hand and tell me what you want? Real quick. Sound loud, real loud. Car, come on, somebody. Just one person. Home. Job. House. Job. Dead free. Say it. This is your seed. All right. So God says, you say it. Put it in. You didn't have the idea. Stop trying to take me or keep me from being embarrassed. I'm God. I won't be embarrassed by what you say. I gave you that desire. And when I put it in your mouth, I wanted you to have it. I don't care how bad you've been. I'm talking about how good I am. So you push all that stuff you did and then you push start and then you move out of the way. You're afraid to name it. When you're in church, you're about to put a seed in. Stop just putting your money in the basket. Say it. Say what it is you want. It's his responsibility to fill it. Well, Lord, I said it last year, and it didn't happen. You said it. You put it in, but you didn't water it. That's why we have two hours, at least two hours a week to water. Two hours in church. Water it. This is good ground. For some reason, you become impatient. You miss out on the things that God is having you to grow up and mature in. God shows you something in the spiritual. It's going to be a little different than maturing in the natural. In the natural, if you hurt somebody's feelings and you say, I'm sorry. Let's say you go to court and you say, I'm sorry. And they're going to say, okay, case is over. No. But right now, if you're listening to me and you come to God right now and you say, Lord, I am so sorry. I'm sorry for not trusting you. I want you to be merciful to me, oh God, as a sinner. God says, just because of your words, I'll forgive you. I'll give you another chance. I'll cleanse you and I'll accept you because God understands your heart. God understands your thoughts. God understands your intentions. God understands that ever since you decided to live a Christian life, Satan's been on your back. On your, before you were a Christian, your life was just miserable and you were on your way to hell. Now that you're saved, at least you know what hell looks like. And so you're sitting around, sitting around, and then finally, oh, that's your noise right there. You open it up. There's your car. All that, all that. 
All that stuff a minute ago, you were afraid to say it. It just took some time for it to manifest. 